Good afternoon once again from Dooley Health and Care Field in Joliet, Illinois, as we prepare for game two of today's doubleheader between the University of St. Francis Fighting Saints and the Calumet College of St. Joseph Crimson Wave. Terry Bonadonna with you once more as we prepare for game two, a nine-inning contest after St. Francis won game one of this doubleheader by a final score of six to five. Let's meet the starting lineups for game two. First for the visitors from Calumet St. Joe's. Leading things off and playing shortstop is Blaze Cano. Batting second, third baseman Joseph Selby. Tommy Benson hits third. Benson's in left field. Hitting cleanup first baseman Michael Macknick. Michael Perry bats fifth. Perry's in right. Darius Little is the center fielder. Hitting seventh, designated hitter Tyler Brody. The catcher and number eight batter is Jacob St. Marie. And batting ninth, second baseman Nino Barbosa. Starting pitcher here in game two is Brennan Nichols. For St. Francis, leading off and playing second base, Alex Martinez. Max Montgomery bats second in left. Hitting third, first baseman Nate Maliska. Jake Klapash hits cleanup and plays right field. Brian Hidalgo is the shortstop. Drew Dant bats sixth at third base. Hitting seventh, designated hitter John McGuire. I'll read you the last two in just a moment, but we're ready to start things. And the first pitch misses outside for ball one. We're underway, 3.27 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Cliff Vickers is the number eight batter and center fielder for the Saints, and batting ninth is catcher Dan Goosel. 1-0 pitch is lined by Blaze Cano out to left field. Max Montgomery takes a step back. And makes the catch for the first out of today's ball game. The starting pitcher for the Fighting Saints is right-hander Sam Pelleggi. 0-2 with a 16.76 ERA this season. This is his fifth appearance, fourth start. In nine and two-thirds innings, he's allowed 18 runs on 11 hits. 18 walks, six strikeouts. He's gotten the first batter of today's game. One up, one down. Here's Joseph Selby. First pitch to Selby is taken for strike one. It's hard to imagine worse conditions to play a baseball game in. It's 42 degrees, rain is falling. One or the 0 1 pitch, rather, is swung on and missed, 0 and 2. So apologies about the, the blurred picture on the video for today's broadcast. But the rain continues to fall, so it's going to be hard to clean up the camera right now. Ball high, one and two. They delayed action between games one and two. Game one ended at about 2.35. Usually it's about 30 minutes between games, so we figured about 3.05, 3.10 we would start game two. The one, two, swung on and missed. Strike three, two down. Good start for Sam Pelleggi. Not sure exactly what went into the decision making because originally they had held off on starting the game. They didn't want to get started if it then started to rain. So they waited an extra 20 to 25 minutes between contests to see if it would start raining. It did, and they decided to start playing. Right after it, it uh, began raining, the decision came in that the game would be played uh, just about a half hour later than scheduled, or about 20 minutes later than scheduled. 1-0 on Tommy Benson. Benson, the left fielder, hitting in the third spot in this game. He was the cleanup batter in the first three games of the series. That ball is lifted, foul to the right side, and out of play, one and one. Lineup has been switched around a little bit by Brian Nowakowski. He had gone with essentially the same lineup in the first three games of the series. He had to make one obvious change here in the fourth game as his catcher, Brennan Nichols, is getting the start on the mound instead. There's a tapper foul, one and two. But the other change he made was dropping Darius Little. Little was the leadoff hitter in games one, two, and three. He moves to number six in the batting order, and everybody else pops up by one. Pelleggi looking for a perfect first inning, his one-two pitch. Fouled away. There was not... A perfect inning in game one. Ethan Fleming started, went the first five, and then the bullpen 
Maybe it was made up of Jake Jerka and Zach Blazekovich who combined to throw two scoreless innings. But none of the three of them had a 1-2-3 frame. We'll see if Pelleggi can do so in the first inning today. Ball high, 2-2. Two and two. First inning of game two today, that is. Trying to put away Benson. Sixth pitch of the at-bat. Swung on and missed. And that does it for the top of the first. Pelleggi strikes out two in a row in a 1-2-3 first inning. We'll go to the bottom of the frame. Saints coming to bat for the first time. We're scoreless. Alex Martinez, Max Montgomery, Nate Maliska due to hit in the first inning for St. Francis in a scoreless tie. Lapash, Hidalgo, Dant, McGuire, Vickers, and Goosel make up the rest of the starting nine. Facing Calumet, St. Joe's right-hander, Brennan Nichols. Nichols pitches out of the windup, and his first toss of the game is taken low and away for ball one on Alex Martinez. Brennan Nichols is a freshman out of Plain City, Ohio. Starting his third game of the season, it's his fourth appearance. One and one with a 3.86 ERA. 1-0 pitch is golfed in a left center field. A long run for it, and nobody can get there. Tommy Benson not able to cut it off. He has to chase it all the way back to the warning track. Martinez pulls up at second base. It's a leadoff double. Good start for the Saints. One, two, three, top of the first, and the bottom of the inning begins with a man in scoring position. Here's Max Montgomery. Brendan Nichols in nine and a third innings coming into play today. It allowed eight hits, five runs, four of them earned, six walks, one strikeout. He leads the team in ERA among pitchers with multiple starts, but again, just nine and a third innings for him. Kale Bauman, who we saw earlier today, has certainly been their best pitcher. He's thrown 36 innings on the season. Max Montgomery shows bunt, takes a ball high. Any run is going to be big in these brutal weather conditions. I don't know how much offense we'll see. Maybe it's a lot. I, I honestly don't know. But not great conditions to hit in. Ball outside, 2-0. The rain continues to fall. It's not falling very hard. If it were about 40 or 50 degrees warmer today, you'd play through this rain without thinking twice about it. But 
on a day where the temperature is hovering around 40. It can't be very pleasant down there as Montgomery drops a bunt down. Backhanded stop by Nichols. The pitcher's throw to first. Pulls Macknick off the bag. It's thrown away. And here comes Martinez with the first run of the game. So Montgomery was trying to sacrifice himself to advance the runner to third base. He ends up reaching first base and getting the run in on an error. That will not be an RBI for Montgomery. It will be a hit for him, though. Infield single. And then again, Martinez came home from third on the error. So at the moment, it's an unearned run. But most importantly for the Saints, there's a runner at first. Nobody out, and Nate Maliska is the hitter. Maliska drops down a bunt, third base side, picked up by Joseph Selby, and Selby's throw is on the mark. So there's the first out. Montgomery advances to second base. Back-to-back -back bunts here in the first inning, so you can already see what's on Brian Mahalik's mind playing small ball early on in this one. You also have to keep in mind that if the weather persists or gets worse, this one, which is scheduled to go nine innings, unlike the first game, which only went seven, it could end a little bit early, and if that's the case, you want to make sure you have the lead whenever the really bad weather does come in. Here's Jake Klapash. He shows bunt, but takes a strike. Again, it's not raining hard, but it is raining steadily. It's been falling since about 10 minutes before first pitch. Klapash does not square to bunt on the second pitch. He takes a ball, and the count is one and one. One run already in for the Fighting Saints. Another man at second base. One and one on Jake Klapash, the fourth hitter of the inning. Ball downstairs, two and one. Brennan Nichols sets. He misses in the dirt. It gets away from the catcher, St. Marie. And Montgomery advances to third base. Count is three and one. Still only one out, and now Klapash can get this run in without the courtesy of a base hit. Good hitter's count. Infield stays back up the middle. The corner men look to be about even with the baselines. Tough day to be a fielder. As Klapash lines it out to right field. That's fair. Just inside the line and down into the corner. One run scores. Klapash into second base with an RBI double. Second extra base hit of the inning for the Fighting Saints. For Jake Klapash, it's an RBI double. And the batter is Brian Hidalgo. Still only one out in the inning, and that came on a sacrifice bunt. Brian Hidalgo, right-handed hitting shortstop. Digs in for the first time. Went one for three with a run in the first game. Saints have scored in the first inning in all four games of this series. Ball one high on Hidalgo. They've scored multiple runs in three out of four games in the series. The only one in which they didn't, they loaded the bases with one out and couldn't add to the one run that they scored. So they've had big first innings all four games. Ball two low on Hidalgo. Going back to talking about the weather, it is still raining pretty steadily here and they're playing through it but the temperature is dropping as well so that's just a bit of a concern ball low 3-0 and on Hidalgo because if this rain turns to freezing rain or snow 
becomes, I would imagine, even harder to play through. I will admit I've never tried to play baseball through freezing rain or snow, so I would assume it's harder. Ball four. It's hard right now for Brennan Nichols to find the strike zone. And I don't know if the weather has contributed to that, but he's been a little bit wild. He's thrown more balls than strikes. That's his first walk, but he's fallen behind every hitter. And he also made an errant throw to first base on a Max Montgomery bunt earlier. So he's been wild to the plate, and he's been wild to first base. A walk and an error have been credited against him. The unearned run from earlier in the inning has been changed. It is earned now based on the fact that the next two guys have gotten on base. First and second now, only one out, and there's another wild pitch. That's his second wild pitch of the inning. It goes all the way over to the dugout, and Klapash was thinking about coming home, but St. Marie found the ball. So he stops at third. Hidalgo stops at second. That takes the double play out of order. One and zero on Drew Dant. And again, still only one out in the inning. A base hit could double this lead. Dant swings and lines it into center field. It is a base hit. Hidalgo waved around third base. The throw from Darius Little does not make it in time. And Drew Dant does, in fact, double the lead with a one out. Two runs single to center field. Another big first inning for the Fighting Saints. They lead four to nothing. In the first game this afternoon, they had seven consecutive hits with two outs in the bottom of the first. Turned them into six runs. They've not waited until there were two outs this time around. Five of the first six batters have reached base for them. Three hits, a walk, and an error. Max Montgomery's, by the way, was ruled a sacrifice and an error. Strike one called on McGuire. John McGuire hits a number to the right side of the infield. Barbosa boots it, recovers, throws to first just in time. Credit to Barbosa for keeping his composure there. After he misplayed it initially, I didn't think there was any chance he was getting the out. But he did stick with it. Flipped it underhand to first base. Two away. The batter is Cliff Vickers. Cliff Vickers takes a strike. Count is 0-1. Vickers, the number eight batter and center fielder, went one for three, game one, double, and a run scored. He's the eighth man to bat this inning. They sent 10 men to the plate in the first inning in game one. It has been their inning today. Vickers hits it foul, 0-2. Eighteen different batters have come to the plate in their two first innings. They've had 10 hits and 10 runs scored in just those two frames. First inning of game one, first inning of game two. The rest of game one, they didn't do much on offense. Ball outside, one and two. Drew Dant is over at second base. Dant singled earlier this inning. He moved up on the McGuire ground out. Four runs are already in. Vickers is trying to bring home Dant and make it a five spot in the first inning. Strike three called at the knees. Vickers doesn't like the call, but he is the third out of the inning. Brennan Nichols is able to recover and get the last two batters, but not before the Saints score four runs on three hits and an error. On to the second. Four zip. Saints on top.
Top two, a uh, really good first inning for the Fighting Saints. They lead four to nothing and lost in the offensive dominion of the bottom of the first is that Sam Pileggi looked really good in the top half of the frame. We'll see if he can keep it going. He went one, two, three with two strikeouts in his first inning out there, and he gets Michael Macknick to swing through the first pitch here, 0 and 1. Macknick, Perry, and Little, 4, 5, and 6, 2 up. Michael Macknick went two for four with a double and an RBI single in game one. He also flew out to end that game as the Saints won at 6 to 5. He takes a called strike, 0 and 2. I don't know what the mentality is for an umpire in a game like this, whether or not he extends the strike zone a little bit because of the weather conditions. Not really fair to the players to do so as that ball is flown into left center field. Long run Cliff Vickers. Vickers still chasing it down and he can't get to it. It bounces up to the edge of the warning track. Vickers hurls it back to the infield, but Michael Macknick is into second base with a double. It never feels fair to change the way you would umpire a game. I just don't know how much of it even would be conscious. But I don't think I have ever seen a baseball game played in worse weather conditions than this. It's raining even harder now than it was at the start of the game. It is really coming down. The wind has picked up. Temperature remaining at about 40 degrees. Michael Perry takes a ball in the dirt, 1-0. and oh. Perry is the right fielder, number five hitter. Two for three with a single, a double, and two runs scored. Macknick is the runner at second base, takes a short lead. Alex Martinez keeping a close watch on him over at second base. Fouled away by Perry, and the count goes to one and one. First hit of the game, first base runner of the game, that Michael Macknick double for Calumet after the first three batters were retired. Breaking ball in for a strike. It's one and two. I mentioned it at the time, but that first inning in which Pelleggi set him down one, two, three was the first perfect inning of the day for St. Francis Hurlers. One, two pitch and the dirt two and two. Game one was a study of bend but don't break. That's exactly what the St. Francis pitching staff did in that seven inning victory. They were up six to nothing. Calumet fought back offensively, scored five runs on 11 hits. Swing and a miss. He chased one downstairs for strike three. Throw goes down to first to make it official. Third strikeout for Pileggi. One down here in the second inning. That'll bring up Darius Little. It has not been by any means a bad offensive series for Calumet, despite the fact that they have lost all three games. They scored a combined 16 runs in those three. First pitch to Darius Little hitting in the sixth spot here. Misses upstairs, ball one. Little had a good first game, two for four with a run scored. Trying to pick up an RBI here. He flies it out to right field. Jake Klapash is under it. He makes the catch. Two away. Macknick's still over at second base. So he hit the leadoff double. Since then, he has not been able to advance. Two outs in the inning, and it'll be up to Tyler Brody to try to get him in. Last chance for Calumet this inning. Tyler Brody's getting his first at bat of the day. 317 hitter. Six extra base hits, nine RBIs. He did not get the start in game one. Nicholas Anderson was the DH. Now it's Brody hitting out of the seven spot in the batting order. And he takes a first pitch ball from Sam Pileggi. Again, 16 runs for Calumet those first three games of the series. 
They came into today averaging six runs per game for the season. So they're a little bit below that against St. Francis these last few days as Brody takes ball two. But still, you're scoring over five runs a game. You figure you're going to win at least one of those. They lost two very tight ball games. Called strike one on Brody. And then one was a little bit more lopsided. Game one was a 7-2 to two Saints win. But in both games two and three of this series, Calumet had the tying run on base when the final out was recorded. Two and one. And the dirt, three balls and a strike. Goosel keeps it in front of him. If Brody reaches and keeps this inning alive, then Jacob St. Marie will get his first at bat of the weekend. It started to snow here at Dooley Health and Care Field. It's a mix of rain and snow as that ball is lined in a right field, a base hit for Brody. Macknick pulls up at third base. He is stopped there. And they're at the corners with two down. And Jacob St. Marie will get an RBI chance here in the top of the second. St. Marie, the catcher, gets the start here because Brennan Nichols, the usual starting catcher, is the pitcher. It's been a tough offensive go so far this year for St. Marie. Senior out of Oak Forest High School, southern suburbs of Chicago. He's just one for 25 at the plate so far, but he does have an RBI. Let's see if he can pick one up here as well. He takes ball one of the dirt from Pelleggi. One zero pitch, outside ball two. Four nothing, St. Francis has the lead. Calumet's threatening to cut into it. Good hitters count for St. Marie, the number eight batter, fifth man to hit this inning. He takes a strike. It's two and one. Michael Macknick hit the leadoff double. The leggy bounced back, got two quick outs before Brody singled to put runners at the corners. Ball high, three and one. I don't know if it's good news or bad news. The rain has almost completely turned to snow here. This is still a mix of rain and snow. The 3-1 gets away from Dan Goosel. It's ball four. St. Marie will reach, but more importantly for Calumet, Macknick comes in to score on the wild pitch. It's 4-1. to one. Sam Pelleggi maybe would tell you it's bad news. Things haven't gone his way since it started snowing. No RBI for St. Marie, but he is aboard. Calumet is on the board. Number nine batter is Nino Barbosa. The reason I say I don't know if it's good news or bad news is because naturally you would think snow falling is probably worse weather conditions than rain, but the ball might not be quite as slippery. I, I don't know. It's going to be slippery regardless. The snow is still wet. I don't know if it has a serious impact on visibility. Like I said before, I've never played baseball in the snow, so I really have no basis of information on this. I don't think I've ever seen a baseball game played in snow like this. Nino Barbosa takes ball one high. They're at first and second with two outs. Back-to-back -back two out base runners have helped Calumet to their first run of the game. Pelleggi misses the zone. Two balls, no strikes. Righty to righty, the next pitch. 
In the dirt, 3-0. Pelleggi has lost the strike zone. That has been the line on him all year. 18 walks in nine and two-thirds innings coming in, but his control was sharp through the first five batters. Then he fell behind Tyler Brody, 3-1. and one. Before giving up the single, he walked St. Marie, and he has fallen behind Barbosa, 3-0. and oh. Ball four high. Back-to-back -back walks, the bases are loaded. And the snow has increased in intensity. I wouldn't quite call it a blizzard, a little short of that. I don't know what the umpires decided before the game as Cano takes ball one. Because it started raining before this game started, and the forecast called for rain to continue. Well, they're sending them off right now. I was just going to say, they clearly had a plan to let them play through bad conditions because the conditions were bad when the game started. So I didn't know just how bad they were going to let it before they called a delay. Brian Nowakowski is stepping out of the dugout. So whatever they did agree on before the game, he apparently feels like hasn't been met. But the snow is really coming down right now. It's freezing cold, obviously. It's snowing. That wouldn't snow if it weren't freezing. But the bases are loaded right now for Calumet, and Brian Nowakowski obviously doesn't like the idea that this rally is being impeded. I don't know if it's a direct result of the weather, but Pelleggi has completely lost the zone. He's missed the strike zone on five consecutive pitches, nine of the last ten, and he's walked two in a row. So... It's a delay. I don't know how long this delay is going to last. If they plan on calling it, the rain slash snow is not scheduled to end for the next couple of hours. So I don't know. I'll, I'll step aside, take a look at the radar. For right now, I am going to take a step off the air. Bases loaded. Two outs. Top of the second inning. Four to one. St. Francis has the lead. And we'll uh, bring you updates as soon as we get them. Right now, it's a snow delay.
at Dooley Health and Care Field in Joliet, Illinois. It's the top of the second inning. St. Francis leads Calumet St. Joe's 4-1. to one. It's been raining and snowing in a, a pretty good back-and-forth mix over the last couple of hours, and they have finally have decided that uh, it's going to be done for the day. So this game will be completed at a later date. Right now, top of the second inning, bases loaded for Calumet with, one, with two outs. They trail St. Francis by a 4-1 to one score, and it will be picked up here. Uh, most likely, I would think, Sunday. But uh, you can go to GoFightingSaints.com for any information about when this game will be completed. All we know right now is it will not be today as the rain and snow continue to fall. That will do it for today's broadcast. So the Saints take the opener of today's doubleheader 6-5, to five, Game 2. We are not able to complete. Again, go to GoFightingSaints.com for any updates on when this game will be finished. That will do it for today, though. Terry Bonadonna here signing off from Joliet, Illinois. Enjoy the rest of your Friday.